everyone. I'm Adrian. This is Jay. That's Philip. Uh, we're from Audio Accents in Canada. And today we're going to talk about our five favorite um, tracks, music tracks that we use um, regularly either to demonstrate or to test. Um, my role in the store, uh, a large part of it is uh, to determine um, what equipment we'd like to offer and, and, and um, represent. And so over the years I've developed a playlist of some sort that uh, helps me determine uh, things relatively easily. So um, I thought it might be a good uh, a topic for a video. Um, at the end of the video, we will list our suggestions and Jay will insert the covers as well so you can actually see um, what these tracks are like and try it for yourself and see what you think. Now, the fact is that there are so many great tracks that it's very hard to boil down to five. And by no means am, am I saying or, or, or that they are saying that these are the very best to test anything in particular, it's just ones that we use regularly. Okay, uh, Philip, why don't you start? Um, what are what are the five uh, this uh, tracks that you recommend? Uh, so I have to preface it by saying that I perhaps don't sequence uh, tracks the way most people would, because um, there are so many great tracks, uh, and I don't purposely seek out things that are supposedly great sounding. What, the way I approach it is I, I choose things I like and sometimes they don't have the most extreme this or that but it all fits in together and it connects to me in a way emotionally that um, you know I, I, I like and mm -hmm. desire and that's actually a more important point than any of the sonics so some of them perhaps might not be the best sonics in this regard or that regard but it all works together and certainly it, it represents something of deep inside of me and this is what I would like to share with the clients that we, that come into the store my clients and but I'm certainly appreciative of anything that they would want to use in a demo and so I never try and you know say you must listen to this it's always interesting to hear what they come up with and it tells me where they're at and it helps me get them to a better point okay so first track that I would choose uh, I'm sure everybody's heard it um, is uh, Boz Skaggs thanks to you okay and what do you like about this track well the track is um, it's quite emotional uh, it's quite heartfelt and of course it has a bass that the bass uh, in this track just extends right right down to the bottom and it's full and rich and it will actually I mean even though I don't really subscribe to it but any speaker system that you play this on you'll find out exactly how much bass response that speaker system have in a way that's real world not like a test track I'm not playing a, a 30 Hertz test track I'm playing real music and this track does it so let me give you uh, sort of fill this out a little bit. <clears throat> First time I heard this was um, when Peter McGrath came to uh, introduce the Wilson Sophia's, the original Sophia. So we're talking uh, 15 years ago, maybe. Um, and at the time, we uh, had uh, we were located in the Century Home, so the house is over 100 years old, and the speakers were on the second floor, and uh, um, the floors are big made of big solid wood timbers very strong and um, Peter uh, in 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 demonstrating the Sophia's at the time Sophia's were uh, uh, one of the uh, magical things about the Sophia ones was that they were very easy to drive and so Peter said to me uh, okay what's the least expensive good decent integrated amp you've got that we can use to demo the Sophia's with and and I said uh, I can't remember what I said. I, I we had quite a few, and he says, "No, it's too much money. It's too much money. Too <laughs> much money." And then finally, I said, "Well, we've got this musical fidelity. It's eight hundred dollars, and it's, I think rated for hundred Y." Says, "Perfect. That's what we'll use." And that night, uh, he played this particular cut and played it relatively loudly, and and the floor literally shook when the deep bass came in. And one of our pod lights actually fell. <laughs> um, I think we sold two pairs of speakers then, uh, just because of, uh, of that. So um, that's a great choice, Bill. What else? Um, so we're going to go with a female voice, because I actually really, really like female voices, and I usually choose female voices. And my second track is uh, by Kat Edmondson. It's called Lucky. 
and um, it's a very simple track. Uh, it's extremely atmospheric, and uh, it will tell you how well the, those speakers can image. Um, she will be right there in the room with you in a way that is totally intimate, and yet at the same time you hear all of the surrounding space around her voice in a way that makes it almost cathedral-like. It's a very interesting track. I think most people, when they hear it, they're, they're surprised that, wow, you're getting this from these little tiny speakers? That's a good track. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing that. <clears throat> What's the third one? Uh, the third one is a track that, actually, we've had them on a number of different playlists, but I didn't really know about it until um, the last Toronto Audio Fest, and uh, Adrian Wilde came up from D'Agostino um, Master System, or whatever it's called. And so she was presenting uh, our D'Agostino progression monoblocks, and, and she created a playlist, and one of the tracks and the track I'm now using almost exclusively to do the demos is uh, uh, it's a Gregory Porter track, um, Hey Laura. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it has this kind of beautiful uh, mid-range, you can really hear how his, his, his voice has weight and um, um, real authority in a way that again is uh, emotionally connective and um, evocative of that kind of um, longing and also at the same time an acceptance of his his fate that he lost the girl mm -hmm. so is is this the one that goes like hey Laura it's me yeah hey Laura it's me I should, it's, I should it's have an sing. awesome awesome track everybody <laughs> oh, yeah, I love that track. loves that track they never comment on the sonics but it's because you you know that this is a real thing and yeah. that's hard to find. It that's actually is very well recorded. Yeah. 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 Okay, fourth uh, recommendation. So I'm going to go a little bit uh, off the board because, well, um, mostly we play kind of more popular music here. Um, but there is a symphonic track that I'd like. Um, it's actually not that, um, it's not that new. So my take on classical music is I like only analog recordings because I find some of the early digital stuff which is easily available not that good. Um, when you listen to most classical music, most mass symphonic music, it's very hard to pick out anything and it just sounds like a wall of sound. And um, when you're able to actually hear various little bits, maybe not uh, spatially, but certainly separated from each other instrument or sections of the orchestra, uh, that's a good thing. So. Um, I read somewhere online someone was 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 rating uh, various different versions of the planets by Hulse, mm -hmm. and I found one that I actually quite liked, which is uh, recorded in um, I believe the early seventies, uh, Boston Symphony Orchestra and uh, William Steinberg, and certainly it's the uh, well, it's uh, it would be Jupiter that 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 movement, which is I think the fourth or fifth movement. That track is amazing um, because it, again, it's not a it's not one of these super duper you know um, uh, kind of like some classical music is considered to be so academic. This is something that can be quite popular. It's quite moving, and uh, you can certainly hear all the various little bits and. Um, yeah, it, it says everything that I, I, I need to know about a speaker. If a speaker can actually place all the various bits within that, and it sounds like they're playing in the same room, but they're separate, that's important. Okay. And your fifth uh, recommendation? Uh, my fifth recommendation is I always start any speaker audition with this track, which is um, uh, Ode to Boy like by Yazoo. It's a live recording, and I like live recordings because they capture a lot of the hall ambience and the audience response. So if, it, if it's well done, it's very three-dimensional. Um, and it has tremendous dynamics And uh, because it's a live recording. When you go to a live show, that's one of the things you get is this unbelievable mass of sound that's coming at you. But again, it's all clearly defined. Um, it's so punchy 
and we often don't get that with uh, most of the recordings we listen to. They're also controlled. So I, I like to start with that track to see um, how natural and, 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 you know, dynamic a speaker is. Great. Thank you very much. <coughs> Jake? Justin Bieber. I'm just joking. Hey. <laughs> yeah. hey. The Bieber. <laughs> I can't even name one of his songs. Uh, I can't either. Oh, oh. bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Bleep. <laughs> Well, um, <laughs> a little mainstream, but the first track, but okay, so I'm, I'm just gonna have to say that um, the tracks I choose are not necessarily the tracks that I necessarily enjoy um, because I've heard it so many times, my ears bleed. Um, the first one is going to be um, Flight of the Cosmic Hippo uh, by Bella Fleck. Mm -hmm. And um, that track is very interesting in testing a system because it goes it test uh, the treble. You can test the treble as well as the bass at the same time, and the bass goes like, like it yeah. fluctuates. Like, it's it's very interesting. And then at one point of the song, I think towards the middle of the song, it goes down like really deep. Like it digs in really deep, and that that um, some speakers just you re you know you know some speakers it's can a do really it. Good test. Yeah, some speakers can do it no problem. Like Wilson's no problem, and then some speakers you just hear just this. Uh, there's a plateau that is <laughs> plateau it's, like yeah, it's like it okay low. yeah where did it go that kind of thing so it's really interesting in testing bass and you're like okay so this speaker can't do anything below 60 hertz or whatever it is you can easily first tell time i states. heard this track was back in the 80s <laughs> jason bloom uh the the president and uh, a co-founder of uh, apogee speakers uh he he uh was demonstrating his I can't remember which model it was now, and he played that track. Um, it, it, it was it was uh, eye opening uh, for for a young audiophile like me at the time. I was just blown away by it. Today, you can pick all this a lot of all these rec uh, recommendations on on Spotify or Tidal or whatever. But back then, you had to go out find a store that actually had a wide enough collection uh, a selection so you could buy it. There was no such thing as an internet, so you couldn't even look on the internet. And if your local dealer didn't have it, you were out of luck. So anyway, great choice. What else? Um, the second track is going to be a Korean track. And um, it's a track, it's, it's not in Korean language. It's a, it's a recorded in Korea. And it's, um, I play this all the time, and I've played it for you before. Um, you agree that it's a good, good track. Um, it's called Hot Spade by, I think, Oh Yoon. Oh Yun Sung or something like that. <laughs> what kind of Korean are you? Oh Yun Sung, yeah, that's right. Oh Yun Sung. So this is like an orchestra kind of thing, um, something that you would hear almost in a, like a movie theater or or um, like a big uh, orchestra hall. Um, the benefit of this track is um, it has this really deep bass and a lot of air on the bottom end. So you see the woofer is really moving, even if you don't hear anything, you it's moving. And some speakers can actually reproduce the entirety of that track, and most speakers can't. So it can. Um, it's a really demanding track, um, um, and and uh, towards the middle of the song, it's very interesting because there's a this triangle, like this random triangle in the middle of um, the air towards the right. There's triangle that goes ding, 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 right? But then this triangle doesn't, um, on really good systems, the first time I heard the, the difference, I always thought this triangle was from the same place. Um, but when I heard the Wilson audio system and the AIDA system, this triangle actually moves by like, because the per person who's like hitting it is like actually doing this. Instead of like just hitting it like this, they're actually moving around. So the placement actually changes within, within, um, within the track. <laughs> You like that though? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, third track is Hey Now by uh, London Grammar. And again, um, I just love, love. Um, deep bass. Deep bass. And um, I really like to make those woofers work. And um, Hey Now is a very good example. It pushes a lot of air. And uh, first time I heard this, I never thought this track was a demanding track at first because most of our speakers can play it no problem. But when I heard a bookshelf speaker, uh, not naming the speaker, uh, it just bottomed out. Like it, it was like clipping and bottoming out. It, it couldn't. It couldn't handle. Uh, it was not the amplifier because we had su sufficient enough power for, uh, for that speaker. But 
Uh, but regardless, um, th it's a really good track to test out and um, to either test out if your amplifier has enough drive um, or if your speaker is just not able to handle it. So I think what's nice about that yeah. track is it actually starts off pretty quiet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and a surprise then, factor. Yeah, there's yeah, a surprise yeah. factor, and then suddenly, even though there's bass notes there, and suddenly it fills up. Yeah. And then it really places the demand on. Yeah, the I still remember when I have because we have like young audiophile groups, right? Yeah. And um, I had my friends over, and I played this track for them. I said they started playing like you know a bunch of uh, modern tracks, and I said, hey, let me let me play this track for you. Uh, have a seat and I play this track and they're like what is this what is this thing you know it's starting off quietly they're all, they're all like unexcited they want to hear bass and, and then this it hits and they're like whoa and then now that's the only thing they play <laughs> they're like I'm playing hey now right now yeah so I, I've used that song in demos and I just play that first part until it, the bass hits yeah um should I say dark side of the moon no I'm not gonna say dark side of the moon <laughs> stupid us and them huh <laughs> Um, fourth, am I on the fourth track now? Fifth, I think. Okay, I'm on the fifth track, okay. So the fifth track is going, fourth? Fourth. Oh, okay. Um, well, um, it's going to be My Favorite Things by Young Sunna. So that's, she's also Korean, but uh, I don't think she speaks Korean. She's um, from the UK, I believe, and she's a jazz artist. Um, I first found this track because I was actually looking through title for Korean music, uh, which title doesn't have, hello. Um, please <laughs> add Korean music. And no Chinese music, so no. Um, but this was, I typed in Korean music and, and she popped up. And so I clicked on it, and of course it was not Korean, um, but I clicked on the first track that she had, it was called My Favorite Things. And it blew my mind. And in fact, I know TriArt uses this um, to demo their speakers at the Tr Toronto Audio Fest. Um, it just, her voice is so, so focused. It's so good for testing imaging. Um, and also just, it's, it's an emotional track for me because um, there's meaning behind the lyrics that she sings. It's very, very like you know, my favorite things. You know, I like that, I like that basically. But when you actually um, look into why, why she wrote the lyrics that she did, um, it becomes very, very emotional. And um, so I really like that track. Uh, and it's also really good for testing the, the dark background because there's no instruments. It's just her voice in the beginning, right? With, with um, triangle or, or bell or some, some sort of like that. So the background, you know, noise is all there um, in a system that is not so good. <laughs> and then in a very transparent system and very, um, um, very uh, low noise uh, system, <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm wording, wording it right, uh, you, the background is very pitch black. So it's, it's a good track to test those two things in my opinion. Um, huh. I'll just leave it at that, you go ahead. All right, great, thank you. <laughs> um, so like the guys, um, um, the, the following are tracks that I use, again, not necessarily because it's the best, it's just what I've been used to and have been using for a very long time. Um, wh whenever I'm uh, trying to decide if I'm going to bring a product in or not, I start with something very simple. Um, the basic philosophy is that if it can't do something simple, it cannot do something complicated. So. Um, uh, I have a number of uh, simple tracks. This particular one is just a uh, uh, single voice. It's um, um, Cowboy Junkies. Uh, the album's called The Trinity Session. It was recorded back in uh, November 1987 and then released in 88. Um, it was recorded in Toronto's Church of the Holy Trinity. And um, the engineer uh, was Peter Moore. Um, at the time, um, a particular microphone had just come out called the Kelrec Soundfield Microphone, and it's basically an omnidirectional microphone. And so he had the band sit around the microphone, and it would just pick up uh, everybody as they started singing and playing. So the first cut is um, Margot Timmons singing by herself in the church, and when the uh, volume gates are open, you can hear the hall of the church just automatically. It's just right there in the background. You can hear this hush and, and, and air and um, then she starts singing and you, there's this magic behind her voice she's right there and you're in the room with you and if you listen carefully you can also hear ding 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 and that's the sound of the uh, uh, heating and air conditioning system uh, where the air is coming through the vents and, and you can hear that it's it's uh, quite interesting anyway I, I use that because I've heard the uh, recording so many times that I know 
uh, where uh, and, and when certain things are going to come on and uh, if for example the system is is not particularly transparent you you won't uh, hear some of the details of that well even though you know it's there you're struggling to hear it and so on so that's a good track that I start with um, the second one is uh, Kristen McBride's uh, Getting to It, uh, um, and the cut is called Night Train. And again, it's just uh, simply because I want now to test for something that's dynamic. Um, um, and again, not necessarily the most uh, dynamic at its, its highest peak levels down to the softest. It's just more of a jump and to see what would happen and whether the system reacts to it well. Um, so Kristen McBride goes into the room, uh, in, in the recording room, he's got his uh, double bass with his fiddle and he starts playing uh, and then he starts smacking on the strings and uh, um, turn it up to realistic levels and it's a lot of fun. Um, you can also hear when the uh, bow is being dragged across the strings and the growl, the rosiny sound, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's quite visceral, that track. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. The first time I heard it, I was like mind blown. Yeah. <laughs> you played um, it for me, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and you should also um, uh, do some uh, research into uh, Christian McBride. He's played with a lot of people, including Ray Brown and uh, Chick Corea. Um, then um, the third track, if I wanted to test the bass extension, again, it's something that I've used over the years. It was actually introduced to me first by uh, Peter McGrath. Peter always travels with this encyclopedic list of um, music and a lot of it's uh, quite interesting. It's not music that you would normally find but um, I always make sure to take notes. This particular one's called, uh, 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 it's from the soundtrack Albino Alligator by Mike, Michael Brook. Um, I don't know how to describe it. You'll have to try it out. And if you've got, again, um, um, Spotify or, or Tidal, look it up. It's uh, quite interesting. Uh, Michael Brook is a Canadian guitarist. He's also a film music composer. The other suggestion, by the way, for, for bass uh, is actually Gary Carr uh, playing Adagio di Albignoni. Uh, Albignoni. Um, I first found his CD back in the 80s and fell in love with the music. Um, it turned out that uh, he was actually a very accomplished uh, bass player. Um, again, check out the album. And um, what's neat about this particular cut, it's... Um, uh, 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 Gary Carr is playing on uh, um, this uh, beautiful bass instrument and in the background uh, supporting him is an organ in this huge church. Um, about two, two and a half minutes into the track, the bass goes really low. And um, what's interesting is that if you've got monitors, uh, a lot of times, many monitors will surprise you about how low they can actually go, and, and, and so try that. Um, and then the other thing that's also interesting is that after it goes very low, it then goes quite high. And for a bass instrument to reach up to the higher registers, it's, it's almost as if it's crying. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, love that track. Number four, um, uh, Villa mentioned a live uh, cut. I like uh, Ryan Adams, not Brian Adams, Ryan Adams, live at Carnegie Hall. Um, oh, my sweet Carolina. Beautiful, quiet. Uh, the audience is, is very quiet listening to him, and he starts singing by himself. Um, uh, I, I love the sense of immediacy of, of being there with him. And, and just being a part of that energy. It's just a gorgeous uh, track that I use. And then finally, for uh, specifically sound staging and imaging, I don't know if I've ever played this for you guys. Um, back also in the late 80s, I discovered this, um, this album, uh, Charles de Troyes with the Montreal Symphony Orchestra, um, Manuel de Falla, The Three Cornet Hat. First cut in particular. Again, I don't know how to describe it. Pull it up. Uh, if you want to hear depth, you want to hear your speakers disappear, uh, um, check it out. It, I, I think you would, you'll really love this. Um, last thing to leave with you um, uh, before we um, turn this off is we all have had this experience where we find something we love, we play it and we play it and after a short period of time we stop playing it because it's now, you know, we just get sick of it. Um, so I would strongly recommend that you develop 
a, a, a large playlist of music that you can switch between. Is that why for, you have like for, 200 items in for, your playlist? For demonstrations and, and for, you know, checking your systems so that you don't get sick of playing the same piece of music because it would actually be very sad that you will not uh, uh, go back to that song or that album for a very long time just because you've played it so many times. So um, uh, something to think about. Anyway, I think that's it, unless you guys have anything else you want to add. Oh, so if you really want to test your system, since Peter McGrath was mentioned several times, the one track you should check out, and what we, yeah. we use this track a lot, yeah. um, not so much to demo, but just to have a, a kind of a reference, um, it's... Uh, Christy Moore. Christy Moore. Yeah. Um, tell me with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see. We try not to play it that often. Um, this is the day. Yes. This is the day, yes. Yes. So do I. Is that so, so do I. I. So, so do I. I. So do yeah. I. Yeah. We'll, we'll link it to the bottom as well. It's, um, a, it's a good track. It's a really great track. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah, so that's yeah. it. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. As always, if you like, don't say bye yet. I haven't oh, finished. Right. If you like the video, uh, please subscribe, um, turn on notifications. Uh, we'd love to hear your suggestions. Very important. Part of the reason that we decided to do this video was so that we can um, um, share uh, um, recommendations of, of, of tracks, albums, why you like them, and so on, so that the rest of us uh, can enjoy them as well. So please add your comments and suggestions at the bottom, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Later.